I got a cut on the light for this one. What's going on, world? It's your man, Pat Caesar, Caesar LLC. Mode mechanic and roadside services, 428 in the morning, baby. We out here doing this, so check this out, man. We're gonna talk about having the wrong equipment at the right time. <laughs> and the wrong equipment uh, 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 um, at the wrong time. Well, look, check this out. This, this, let me just give you a feeling in the story right now. I gotta go 13 miles out. It's gonna take me about 20 minutes. Okay, okay, okay. You're right, I should definitely have this now. Morning time is my jam, baby. I am up live in effect. And I gotta go, I gotta go a couple times over to go pick somebody up to come back um, to take them to work. So pretend it like this, I'm being an Uber today and I'm being a tow man. <laughs> like unexpectedly at four o'clock in the morning, this gentleman called me and needed a tow. So I'm like, listen, man, uh, from where I stay, because of all the stuff that happened where I was at, I can't keep my truck at my house anymore. So my truck is at another location. But parts from my truck are at my shop, like my chains and stuff, because the other day I did a, uh, I pulled out a semi truck. Now, by the time all this airs, you'll see all that, so you would understand. Well, this is the thing. I left all that stuff sitting inside of the battle lab. I'm inside of my roadside vehicles, 2012 Kia Optima. And I'm like, listen, man, the fastest, most efficient way I can go and get you because I gotta go to three different places just to get my truck together before I can even come to you. Not to mention that it's cold outside and I did not plug it up last night, so it's gonna probably take a few minutes to get it started. So, uh, if I had my dually and my dually was running like it's supposed to and it had the wheel lift on it Kill two birds with one stone. I go tow this gentleman and Give him a ride to work and make all the money without doing all the extra back and forth. It's not gonna work. So I'm having to Crunch the numbers a little bit more to make this happen So what I'm doing right now is going to go pick up this gentleman take him to work go to my shop Pick up my other tr my truck, go from my shop to my other property. Pick up my tow truck, leave the, leave my, my my truck there again. My my tow truck come back down here to this other city again. Tow the vehicle, come back, switch everything out, and then go back home. It's highly inconvenient. It's not efficient at all. Getting the right equipment. Uh, will save you so much time and so much money. It seems like it might cost a lot up front. At this point, I would I would literally pay like I would pay 20 grand just to have what I need because I get too many calls at this time of morning and I have to do all this shuffling just to make things work. And it was cool when the tow truck was right outside of my house, but because of um, the the code enforcement, I wasn't able to do it anymore. So. It's, it's, it's a headache for me. But the only other solution I got now is to get a wheel lift truck so I don't have to worry about um, uh, the neighbors complaining on me being either too loud or whatever the case is because they won't even know it's a tow truck. And that will save me a lot of aggravation. Get the right equipment. I'm working on it. Keep this from being too long-winded. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. And I'll re-record once I pick up the car so you would understand, you know, okay, this is what's going on. Because it's now 4.31 in the morning. And uh, we out here, man. Already. Catch y'all on the other side. I've never been so happy to have a mask. So uh, it is now 5.10 in the morning. And I just got done doing that, that um, drop off for of the customer and... Uh, it didn't smell the best. And we are out here in the deep woods of Avon Park. We are at the prison. Uh, he is a CO out here. And people say this ain't a prison. I'm like, yo, there's like three layers of like barbed wire fence. How could you possibly, look at this, look at this. You can't see it. You can't see what I'm seeing, but I'm like, yo, there's the circle rounded barbed wire fence and it's like, seven eight layers high like that like and it's like three of them back to back like how can you tell me this ain't this is like a legit like maximum security prison out here um yeah yeah i'll tell you something 
when you're dealing with certain certain people in law enforcement, you can usually tell at what level of law enforcement they're on. Because it was very hard to talk to this gentleman. Um, as he has that, he has that do what I say demeanor. Um, and it's even worse because he don't have no money. Oh, where am I going? I think I'm going the right way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, uh, in this place man i don't know if the camera you can't you can't see anything if i was out here in the daytime you could see it but between seeing the deers and barbed wire fences and you have to cross a bridge to get here uh it's not like yeah this is a, this is a maximum security prison like i would even go as far as saying the way that some of the housing look out here I, damn it look like a concentration camp uh it, it's kind of scary i don't like this area um so with this gentleman this gentleman lives like two hours away and he comes here to work because he's moving to the area and i'm like all right i understand i'm like damn dude that's a long way i rent cars out through get around hire car in toro and i was going to offer him one of my rental cars but all i kept hearing him say is that he don't want to spend a lot of money He's driving a, and you're gonna see it in the video, a uh, Dodge Grand Caravan, and um, he's driving a Dodge Grand Caravan, and he says that it stopped driving, and he had to pull over. Says he can smell transmission fluid. It sounds like transmission fluid. And um, he said it was running, but it won't drive. Stopped, I'm like, bro, it sounds like your transmission just went out. Oh, well, I'm going to take it to the mechanic and see what they say. But which mechanic do you think I should take it to? Because, you know, I don't know anything around here. So I'm telling him what I think. He doesn't want to hear what I got to say. But he's trusting my opinion at the same time. I'm like, bro, I don't know what you want me to tell you. Like, you're asking me where you should take it. I'm telling you where you should take it. But then you're telling me that you don't want to spend money. I'm like, well, I, mechanics ain't free. I, I gave him a hell of a deal just to come and pick him up. And it's only because of my uh, my not having the proper uh, uh, stuff all in the same place. Why I even did what I did? Hmm. There's no way I would have told him and brought him all the way out here and still had to drop the car off. It wouldn't have made no sense that, that way either. This way is at least it's fuel efficient. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I ain't got no service out here. You got to remember in the roadside game, you got to take a breath and calm down. You know, people are going to call you, they're in distress, they're freaking out. And if they especially got a matter of fact attitude, it makes it even worse because they don't know what they don't know, but they act like they do. <laughs> and that is a part of the problem. So, yeah, strange four and five o'clock in the morning calls. You know, offbeat Uber driver, and uh, dealing with people, man. Just dealing with people. That's what it really is. So we'll go ahead and kill it here, and I'll show y'all the vehicle whenever we get back to it. Because now I gotta go to my shop, pick up my, the battle lag. Actually, I'll probably just pick up the chains and then go to the, the car and go from there because, yeah, that's what we're going to do, is to go from there.